It's a strike that's shut down 14 major ports in America is entering the third day. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. About 50,000 dock workers are on the picket lines, closing down shipping ports along the East Coast and Gulf of Mexico. Economic experts predict the strikes could cost the economy as much as $5 billion a day, and they predict crimps in the supply chain will create shortages and higher prices for consumers. There are already reports of panic buying. Some stores are running out of toilet paper, even though it's made in the U.S. or comes in by rail from Canada and Mexico. Items that might become scarce include perishables like bananas, cherries, as well as cocoa, sugar, and imported wine. The dock workers are seeking higher wages and protection from automation. While the blue-collar vote will play an important role in the 2024 presidential election, a major reason why unions may not be the reliable vote the Democrats have depended on in the past. CBN's chief political analyst David Brody has more. The presidential fight in battleground states has a number of key storylines. High on the list, the union vote. This is the first time in decades just got endorsed by the rank-and-file members of the Teamsters, which I happen to think is amazing. That was a surprise. An unexpected 60 percent of the union expressed support for Donald Trump over Kamala Harris. There are a number of reasons, including his administration's economic populist success, a new pledge to not tax their overtime, and promises to protect their jobs from cheap migrant labor. Trucker J.W. Payne, a Teamster for 14 years, adds another. The Democrat has totally left the working man and woman, uh, the blue collar workers. Um, they're more like we want to go uh, spend time with George Clooney up in Hollywood and get that caviar versus sit down and have banana pudding and also bologna cheese sandwiches for lunch. That mindset seems to be at the heart of the change. More union members now see Democrats as the party of the elites, out of touch with traditional family values. My, how times have changed. In 1968, nearly half, 46 percent of Americans who lived in union households identified as Democrat. By 2016, that number had shrunk 11 points to just 37 percent. When Trump came on the scene, another drop, now down to 33 percent. Steve Gruber is a former union member from Michigan. When you go to big union states like Michigan or Nevada, there's this erosion of support. I mean, they're leaving in droves because they know the economy was better under Donald Trump. VP Harris has some union backing, at least in the leadership ranks. Sean Fain, head of the big United Auto Workers Union, got a prime slot during the Democrat convention. Kamala Harris is one of us. She's a fighter for the working class. Union Democrats say they like the legislation passed during the Biden administration that they believe will create jobs for them in construction and manufacturing. They also say Trump benefits the billionaire class. Plus, as president, he packed the courts and government agencies with anti-union judges and appointees. Harris made sure her first stop after joining the presidential race happened in Michigan at the UAW. You may not be a union member. You better thank a union member. For the five-day work week, you better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. She'll be doing the thanking if she can do as well as Biden did with union members in 2020. Biden won 57 percent of the union vote in the key Rust Belt states compared to Trump's 40 percent. Union voters typically make up about 20 percent of the electorate. That's about one in every five voters. And there are roughly 2.7 million union members in those battleground states alone. Former Michigan union member Tom Norton, who comes from a family of union members, thinks she could be in for a surprise this time around. This is the first step of a union really starting to shift to the Republican Party. As long as he can finish the job of showing how businesses and unions can work together, we're going to have a very fundamentally different and stronger Republican Party that's going to have old-fashioned blue dog Democrats with people that represent themselves more like Reaganites, and it's going to be a very strong party. It's all part of a shifting electorate that makes this presidential race even more intriguing. David Brody, CBN News, Washington.